How's it going guys? This is Jackal from Compete Complete. I'm going to be giving you some quick settings and just quick little tips to make your competitive experience that much better just by changing a few settings within your game. So first, I'm going to leave a link in the description called Auto Exec. You're going to download that and put it in your CFG folder. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to give you some lag comp. Uh, it's going to fix like um, what like it'll give you a lot more hit registration and uh, just overall better gameplay, uh, depending on if you're using hit scan or projectile. Just makes the game a little bit more accurate and uh, smoothed out. This is pretty much a universal thing that every competitive player uses. Um, 33 MS, you see right there, it's shaking. You can't see what weapon I have because I actually have V models turned off. Um, 33 MS for hit scan and 15.2 for projectile. Um, hit scan being like the sniper rifle scatter gun, things that just hit when you're aiming over them rather than actually taking time to cover the distance and connect with the target. So you're going to download that and it's going to change your loop to 33 and if you play like soldier or something along with sniper just type in uh, in your console CL like uh, enter 0, 0.0 like 15 I think and it should change. Oh, well you can't change it while playing. You're gonna have to go jump into spectator or something like that. Alright, so this is the question I get asked most. What are your mouse settings and sensitivity and whatnot? So we're gonna head into options and mouse. This is the only thing that should be checked. ROM input moves. ROM input reads mouse movement directly from the device, bypassing control panel mouse settings, amplifying more reliable mouse movement. That sounds pretty good. Um, everybody uses it. Just don't question it. Put it on and you'll love it. It's gonna throw off your sensitivity you're used to, but if you're watching this, you probably want to change that anyway. Um, telling people your in-game sensitivity, like, hey, I play on .42 is not going to do anything for them, because .42 is different for them than it is for you, most likely, depending on your mouse. So .42 in-game with 3600 DPI on my mouse, DPI meaning uh, dots per inch, basically is uh, the sensitivity on your mouse alone, and higher DPI isn't necessarily better, by the way. Uh, but that comes to 10.8 inches to a 360, meaning I have to move my mouse 10.8 inches across my mouse pad to perform a 360 in game. Now, if I halved my DPI in my mouse to 1800 and bumped my mouse sensitivity up to 84, they would be the exact same thing because you half one and double the other. So that's why telling people your game sensitivity isn't really reliable. You go to nodetalent.org, punch in your DPI, and um, punch in your in-game sensitivity and it'll tell you. Also that brings me to your window settings and your control panel. Yeah, that does matter. Actually, with raw input, I'm not sure if it does, but there's a thing called enhanced pointer precision. That's basically mouse acceleration, and mouse acceleration just wrecks uh, muscle memory for some people. For most people. Most people don't like it, some people do. Uh, it says enable mouse acceleration recommended when using raw input. Yeah, fuck you. You don't want it, just in my opinion, don't do it. it. You just want your same sensitivity so it's linear every time you move it so your brain can you know, get consistent with your hand and the distance that you move your mouse to the distance it moves on the screen. Now we're going to go into audio. This isn't too big of a deal, but I find that uh, putting your sound quality at high and uh, speaker configuration at 7.1, especially when you have nice headphones, uh, gives you a really nice, uh, like, uh, field of sound view, I guess, sort of say. You have a good um, perception on where things are coming from. Like, it expands sound to, like, a really nice area. Just makes, like, yeah, your directional view of sound really good. Uh, especially if you have headphones that have, like, direction, or, uh, what is it called? Uh, sound expansion. So give that a try, see how you like it, and, yeah, just kind of mess with it. So here's kind of a big one, is your video settings. Um, DX8 is superior, it just has less clitter, uh, clutter, <laughs> clitter, uh, clutter than DX9, and uh, just the style of it I like more. Most competitive players use DX8. Make sure your motion blur is off and your field of view is 90. Those are the big things that you need to have. And how to get your DX level to 8 is you're going to go into your Steam, right click on Team Fortress, and there'll be 
in one of the tabs uh, set launch options and you're going to type this into it it's going to be dash dx level space 81 and that'll make your dx level 8 if you wanted it 9 it would be 91 and so on and whatnot all right now we are going to hop in advanced options uh, automatic reload weapons when you're not firing. I strongly recommend this. There's no reason not to have this. Because you can instantly cancel a reload with a shot. So, I mean, why not? Fast weapon switch, yeah. And hit sound, yeah. It's worth it. Um, this is actually a new feature with the update. Damage text doesn't prevent overhead effects. An example, crit. This is pretty cool because you used to... If you turned off damage, it would just say critical hit when you got a headshot, but it wouldn't show how much damage you did. And if you turn on damage, it would show how much damage you did, but you lost out on the critical hit. And that was something fun to have. And now with the update, you can have both. So that's pretty cool. Alright, moving on to the more complicated things. As you can see, my screen does not probably look like yours. The 150 is green, and the 25 is white. But if I switch classes here... My ammo in reserve is gray, which is kind of cool. Uh, my crosshair is also inspired from the battle rifle from Halo 3. as kind of a little Halo 3 nut. It is such a good game, and I miss it. But I strongly rec recommend a HUD. Uh, a lot of players use, like, Brazel HUD or PV HUD. I'm using Omp HUD. It's just all matter of preference. It makes the game look so much better. Um, and I apologize here in advance for these missed shots, but I'm recording, so I have a huge delay. So let me try to see if I can show you my damage. Oh, this is terrible. Yeah, there you go. See, so critical hit, and they showed it in white. Pretty cool. Just adds some little flavor to your game. It also pushes up your health and ammo closer to your screen. Just removes a bunch of clutter, like shit you don't need. So I strongly recommend downloading a HUD. Alright, here's the big thing that we gotta get out of the way. Hardware is a very important thing in this game. You are gonna want a good mouse. I have a Logitech G400. A lot of top players use this mouse and there's a good reason for it. It's a remake of the Logitech MX518, which was a godlike mouse, and this one is just as good, if not better. Uh, the laser in it just has pinpoint accuracy. It's amazing. It's comfortable. It's great. And it's like 30 bucks. You don't need to go and spend like $100. Like, I used to use a Steel Series of World of Warcraft MMO gaming mouse, and that thing was pretty big, and it was 100 bucks, and... Definitely didn't like it as much as I like this one. Alright, and this sound. That is the greatest sound in the world. That is a mechanical keyboard. It's extremely responsive. The keys bounce up instantly right when you press them. It's just, I think, I mean, it's well worth the money. I mean, how much does a keyboard cost that you guys are buying from Razer or some shit? Like, 100 bucks? This cost me 80 from Logitech. It's a G710 Plus. And I'm also very biased against Razer. They die out really quick and don't perform as well as some other brands. Plus, the CEO of Logitech is really sexy, so that's a benefit you get from going with his products. Alright, and the mouse pad. My mouse pad is 17 inches long, or wide, and like 15 inches tall, I think about. It's, it's amazing, and like, you pay... $12 for a mouse pad, some odd, like, weird number. And I paid $15 for this. It's extremely smooth. It, it looks good. It's big. So I don't see why not. You just order one online. Probably you can't really get one in stores. This is the big Buddha. This is the biggest thing of all. It's your monitor. Yeah, the thing you're looking at right now. You want a monitor that says 120 hertz refresh rate or higher. Right now I have a 60 refresh rate monitor, and I am trying to get a higher one. This improves your gameplay immensely, according to everybody, so that is definitely something worth investing. I've looked at one. They're, they look beautiful. They're amazing. Um, what, what that means is there's a lot of comparison videos where they put like the monitors side by side, 
and uh, like drag a window up and down and show how uh, responsive each one is and the 144 refresh rate just like is instant it just no no like it has such a higher response time it's amazing and that's definitely what you want because when you move your mouse you're expecting it to do it instantly and I'm used to 60 Hertz so this isn't really detectable by me so yeah, that's definitely something to look in forward to. Next up is your headphones. Things you're wearing on your ears, hopefully, because he, I doubt your whole family wants to hear my voice about talking some fucking video game. Uh, strongly recommend, like, Turtle Beach, but if you want to go top of the line, definitely Astro. Uh, good headphones are just essential for gaming. They just they feel nice. They have, like, a good microphone, so you don't sound like you're, like, in a fucking fishbowl when you're trying to talk to people. And... Yeah, like, like I said earlier, they just give you a good uh, directional view of where the sound's coming from. Like spies on cloaking or, you know, shots or whatever. Especially the sniper shots. So, that's something to definitely invest in. Thank you so much for watching, guys. By the way, if you're looking for this map, it's called TR Aim Training. It's a wonderful map. It trains your muscle memory in this room. This is probably the best room of all. You just, uh, well, you were supposed to get up there. Get up here, shoot the red, and like, I don't know, there's like different patterns you can do to practice your muscle memory. Uh, you can look at like videos on YouTube on techniques on how to do that using that color web. Alright, I hope you guys have a great day. Tune in for more tutorial videos. I assume that's why you're watching videos on my channel. Anyway, peace out.